It's Bill Krakenberger and Rosalie Michaels on the Wisecrack Sports Betting Podcast by WSN.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Wisecrack Sports Betting Podcast by WSN.com. And this show is all about sharpening and entertaining all of you betters out there. And we talk strategy, sports, picks, and every week, we have a special guest from the world of sports betting, and this week is no, um, no departure from that. <laughs> so uh, Bill Krakenberger has been a professional gambler for over 25 years, and Wisecracks is your chance to tap into a little bit of his wisdom every single week. I'm Rosalie Michaels. I'm a daily fantasy sports analyst, and I'm proud to be sitting here alongside the crack man to bring you our brand new episode. How's it going, crack? How are you doing up there in Vegas? Good, good. Doing, doing okay. Uh, getting ready for the football season. Hopefully, hopefully we have these, uh, some college football too. We're getting some of these divisions that are canceling and, and uh, some of these schools, I, I kind of understand, but uh, hopefully, hopefully we get some kind of even if it's just like the SEC playing SEC or ACC playing ACC, but <laughs> it just seems like that uh, every day something new is coming out. So I, I hope I hope we can uh, at least get some start of it. And then, of course, I want to get the NFL season in. So, OK, so with college football, you know, with that kind of new type of environment that they, they're talking about doing with ACC playing, playing within all that, that those smaller divisions, is that going to be good for sports betting, do you think? Or do you think it's going to be too lopsided? Well, it just gives us sports betting in general. So <laughs> they're, 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 it's never going to be lopsided when, you know, you have bookmakers that can come up with a line. I mean, I've seen lines, you know, giving 40, 50 points sometimes. So they'll always make it uh, an interesting line for the betting public. Uh, I, I just hope that we have it, though, because honestly, I don't see – the, the college football season, like people are optimistic and I'm trying to be, I just yeah. don't see uh, having uh, a full season here. So we'll see what yeah. happens. It's the reason why I really don't like betting a lot of futures. I, I have bet a couple of futures on, on NFL things, uh, tying up my money for that, you know, half a year, which, uh, you know, you, you, I actually may get refunds on that, but I have the best numbers. So you just hope you go with it and uh, let's get 2020 out of the way. So it's worth locking in and we'll talk about that in a little bit because we've got so much on tap for you guys today as usual you know today that's what we're talking about when our strategy topic we are talking about player props in the nfl we actually kind of have an all nfl show today which you know makes me very happy because nfl my first love as i tell you guys all the time because so we're talking about player props in the nfl that's our strategy session and then our guest today is a guest from my section of the woods, my world in fantasy football, Evan Silva from Establish the Run. He is a huge name in fantasy football and analysis. You know, he's very, very, very well respected in that community and has great advice for all the fantasy football players out there, including daily fantasy players, as well as people that are, are sports betting too. You can get a lot and we'll talk to him a little later. And then of course we have Crack's pick of the week and what else he's kind of looking at. And we end up and follow that with our Twitter questions from you guys. So let's get jumping right into the NFL because we're only a few weeks away. Yeah. And weeks. I'm very excited. <laughs> so talking about player props in the NFL, uh, you know, there's a lot of crossover between what I do in DFS and researching player props. And in fact, I do, I do that for DraftKings during the season as well, talking about player props and over-unders. So this is something I might be able to hang with. I know I'm not going to be able to live up to you, but at least I'm going to be able to hang with you here. So I'm excited to explore it. So sit, let's start off by saying, can you give us a quick intro to player props and how you approach them in terms of betting? Well, a quick intro would be, uh, yes, player props offer some good value. Uh, throughout the year, and with the in, you know with all these big fantasy sites going viral over the last couple of years, yeah, uh, really the sports books are offering more and more proposition bets. So uh, 
look forward to getting into this, talking about it a little bit, giving my take on it. And uh, yeah, let's go with it. All right. All right. So let's get started. Okay. So what are your biggest tips for players looking to get into betting props in the NFL? Good. Okay. So, uh, you know, while there isn't a ton of value in NFL sides, I, I, I really don't like betting a lot of NFL sides, yeah. uh, but the, the player props do offer the most weekly value that I see. Uh, most of my NFL props are for the primetime games, the Sunday, the Monday, and the uh, Thursday night games. They're the ones that it seems the bookmakers really focus on putting a lot of props on. Uh, and that's the ones everyone's watching too. It's the, like big time for everyone. They, so they try to give you a, so many betting opportunities uh, because there is that key primetime game. Uh, just watch your juice on them too, though, because sometimes some of these new Euro sites may want to charge like 120 on both sides. That's lay a dollar 20 to win a uh, dollar. That's just crazy. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll lay a dollar 15 both sides, but here in Vegas, there's even places like the Westgate and, and uh, South Point. These are a dollar 10. I'm sure that the circle, when they come up with props, they're going to be very fairly uh, priced also. So, but, but for the beginners to start that, that are starting out, a player prop is in the NFL is usually on the over under for the individual players, yards, receptions, touchdowns, touchdowns attempts. So yeah. that, that, that's what I mean by player props. For okay. example, one of your favorites, maybe uh, Arizona <laughs> wide receiver, Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah. Uh, he, he may have an over under of four and a half catches and 85 yards over under for the night, which means you can uh, bet. Will he get uh, reception receiving yards of over 85 yards or under 85 yards? Yeah. So you're betting over under that, that number uh, years ago before fantasy was, was really everywhere. Like I said earlier, player props were just some of the strongest things I ever bet because there was no information. So my guys, mm. my team really came up with some really good information on player props. Now, not to say that we still don't get those because we have, we, we absolutely do just that there's not as much value as there was uh, with all these data and statistics that, that these fantasy sites are using. Yeah. However, like I said, I still been able to find some good value on one. And I bet a handful of them e each and every week. So, yeah. um, th to be honest with you, this might sound crazy, but the Super Bowl time. Oh, my God. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Yeah. Uh, I'll have action literally on so many different play player props. I think I had close to 50 this past year uh, player props or different situations. Now, that that can actually be from things like literally uh, dumping Gatorade, uh, the color of the Gatorade. I was going to say, are those the type of things that you do? Because because yeah, I look at you and I know you're just such a professional gambler and, you know, you're, you're very smart about how you do things. And those, you know, the Gatorade number and the coin flip and stuff during the playoffs or in the Super Bowl, especially, those are things that I'm like, I wonder, do you bet on those? Oh God. Oh yeah. It's, it's all about information too on stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the warm-ups, the, the color of the Gatorade, like I said, but it's also what color hair will uh, the singer, whoever it may be there, uh, have on. And, and, yeah. and just just finding out some key information, the bands that are on stage. It's really, uh, I've had really a lot of fun in, in, with these over the years. And just those kind of props have been so good to me. Uh, you know, before halftime last year, uh, when the halftime was over, I think we were seven and one on props last year. So, um, but let me just tell you a couple of good tips just in general for, for, for when you bet player props, you want to really bet the unders closer to game time and overs early if possible, because the public tends to bet on those overs early and they okay. tend to bet on the unders. Uh, I'm sorry. They, which means that you can bet if you have under on a certain player, you actually want to bet that late because the sports books are forced to over move. And let's okay. face it. People are going to the casino. They're, you know, they're going through the sports book or just playing on their app. They're betting overs. They're betting on their favorite players to score. They're betting. It's not fun not to root and scream and yell. So yeah. um, for, the, for the people that, that do this, uh, myself, as you guys know, I, I don't scream and yell at anything. I I'll <laughs> hardly watch a game. I do enjoy uh, my buddies coming in town and stuff, which I don't know what's really going to happen this year. But I'm going to be yeah. going back to Jersey a lot on the weekends. And uh so I'll be with my buddies watching football and stuff and it, it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. Um, but I just see when I'm in this casino, you could just see whenever an offensive team, you know, gets a player, a player gets a 20 yard catch or a, a 12 yard run, there's cheering and yelling. So um, yeah. people love to bet overs. So if you're going to bet overs, bet them early. You're going to bet unders. I, I kind of bet the unders late. 
Uh, Got it. Just folks tend to over move them. And that's that's just so you get the best line, right? Because if if you're betting the overs early before everybody else gets in on the action, right? You're going to get a better line because you know that people are going to bet the overs because that, that's right. what they want to do. Now, now the, the bookmakers you, sometimes will know the way you're betting, so they'll actually overinflate them a little bit. So maybe oh. if someone like Fitzgerald would normally be 80, you know, 80 yards, maybe tonight's game or whatever, they'll, they'll make it 86 and a half. Cause I know people are, if he's hot during the year and then maybe yeah. they see the pattern, especially the, all it takes is the last game, one game, one game, the last game he played. And if you had a big game yeah. automatically, uh, they, they, they skew the number where they know people are going to be betting the over. I think so of like Drew, Drew Brees had a great prime time game last year where he was yeah. like unbelievable. And yeah. the next week, exactly what, happened was they you know put all the numbers higher than they should have been and breeze easily went under i mean he yeah he didn't come back with a with a big game like he did well even he didn't even come back with, come with, with an average game so uh it's kind of kind of interesting from from that perspective of of uh but you still want to follow the bankroll management too it's very important just because there's you know 30 player props up uh, you know e each game doesn't mean that you're going to be betting all 30 so you know yeah you, you know you got to make sure find find a value on and don't overdo it it's very very important um you know what i do too look for the unders on some big name players that have been banged up or, or coming back for, from an injury um, like alex so that, smith that, that, we were just talking about alex yeah smith yeah so look look for those unders uh for a big name players as long as the player goes on the field and sees one play that yeah. counts as action so uh but, you know, I have to tell you, that has been a successful method for me, too. But That's again, a big name player is, is the key here because you want something that the public knows. And, and they, oh, he's coming back. He's pumped up. But um, so, again, and that you want to bet the under closer to game time, too. Um, That's like intriguing. Said, well, yeah. Because in yeah, fantasy, yeah, yeah. you do the same thing. You're afraid to, um, you know, start those players like in DFS. You don't want to start those players because they're just coming off of an inj inj injury. But. It's a great play for like your over unders, those player props, because they, the, the odds are they're going to go under. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, like going it. back to that juice again, too. I want to yes. really enforce that because I, I, I just see a lot of people that are new to sports betting. They don't even realize that, you know, the sports books charge minus 110 each way on props. So they'll yeah. see these euro sites that are especially represented in New Jersey and the new jurisdictions. And they're charging like 120 on each side. Don't even look at them. No, I mean, okay. really, I, mean, I, I won't even give them action on that stuff. So, uh, yeah. you know, you just want to watch. You, you just don't want to lay uh, these, these these big time juice on these things. And, you know, if I bet and if I bet something and if I send out to my guys a crack win, something over four and a half minus 110, I, I don't want you to lay the dollar 40. Uh, you know, it's 30 cents more. So I, mm -hmm. I definitely want to make sure people know do not lay more than I recommend. I'll actually send out to my guys even uh, what is the worst I will lay. So if I go over four and a half okay. and I think it's something that should be minus 120 when I know they can actually get minus 110 and 115, I'll still say up to minus 120. Okay. So you, you do um, with your subscribers, you give them that kind of window of what they can take that bet in. But in gen in, for the rule in general with player props, it should be around 110, right? If you're getting a 105 or something like that, that's like a screaming deal, right? Yeah, you're not going to get that. No, nobody, nobody has that. The 110 is already scarce. Okay. Uh, but, but however, a good casino, a good casino, a good sports book, yeah. I know at least five that have minus 110 both ways. So stick with okay. them. Uh, okay. You know, like I said, it's these Euro sites, man. They just price gouge you. When it comes to a money line, they just price gouge you. Even on, I notice a lot of these places, uh, you know, if you bet a money line on an NFL game compared to a regular line uh, out here in Vegas, where I may be laying, you know, a dollar twenty-five here in Vegas, come back a dollar fifteen, or, or or even a dollar five, I'll notice the money line, you know, in Jersey, will be like minus one forty-three, come back one hundred nine. Wow. It's like wow. wow, wow, you can. It's just ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. Yeah. So is it because they they can? take advantage of that situation. It is. These are all new player. Very good. It's absolutely, they can, they know that most people are new to this and uh, it's new in that jurisdiction and they can just get away whatever they want. So I recommend just the 110 shops, stay away from the money lines. 
Got it. When they're going in that direction. And that's why you talk all the time about line shopping, making sure that you are getting the, the best best odds for your bet. So that yeah. that previous, see, I did. I learned a lot from our previous pod with cool. about line shopping. It's, yeah. uh, like I said, I know how to online shop. So line shopping is exactly the same thing. <laughs> so I like it. So you were talking a little bit about your, um, you know, your Super Bowl uh, and do you, do you bet the playoff props as well? Oh yeah. Oh, that, that's when a lot of the places will have more uh, proposition bets up. So, oh yeah. Playoffs, Super Bowl, they, they'll offer so many more for the playoffs than they will on a regular Monday night. And then of yeah. course, Super Bowl will offer even five times, 10 times more than that um, on more than that, even 20, 30 times, depending on, on which sports book it is, we'll offer that many more props. Okay, so I know you've got some good stories. You were talking before about, because again, I, I just don't see you betting on the color of the Gatorade, but like you talked about, yeah, sometimes you get some information. Like, how do you know the color of the Gatorade? Well, I'll tell you, it's all about uh, having the knowledge and connections. Uh, oh. I'll give you a perfect one. Okay. Uh, three or four, maybe five years ago, it could have been four years ago, Coldplay was the halftime band. Yeah. And so a, a guy that does security uh, texted me and said, hey, uh, I, I know this guy. He said, listen, uh, well, I actually told him at first, I said, listen, any little nuggets you can get me out there. I don't know if it's you're out there, you see something or if you can see the maybe the warm up band, the color of the, the, the lead singer's hair or the color of the, <laughs> the, 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 the halftime act's hair, whatever. Maybe that, that's a bet. Or what, yeah. what will they do? What are they known to do at other shows? They'll, they'll formulate something that will make a prop very interesting. Well, mm -hmm. usually the first song is a prop, even like the Rolling Stones. What's going to be the first song? Start me up. So Coldplay, their first song, um, this guy said they acapelloed the song Yellow. Uh -huh. So I said, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. So now the sites that had this up, well, they didn't even, they had Yellow at like seven to one. They had like four other songs ahead of it. So they didn't realize that you can have information like I do and mm. um, yellow. By the time I was done betting it, it was actually minus a dollar forty or a dollar fifty. No, no more than that. It's a dollar ninety. So you have to lay one ninety instead of taking six to one and five to one, four to one. So I got down some really good money on that by having that. And you know, I don't like to say this word because there is really no inside information. But that's the closest mm -hmm. thing you can really get to inside information. Well, I mean, there is, you know, you, yes. you have to look at all that stuff and you follow. That's why in fantasy, you know, we follow the beat writers and stuff, because if you know ahead of time, hey, you know, somebody tweaked their ankle in practice and you've got them starting against a tough defense. Maybe you don't want to do that that week. You know, maybe yeah. it's going to be a, a tough week for them. So it's just paying attention to all the little bits and pieces, right? Oh yeah. If, if you find anybody that, uh, that that's working the game and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. listen, you, you're just trying to get gain an edge on the sports books. They want to <laughs> put a lot of different things out there. So they're putting all these different lines out there. At least you can gain an edge on the, uh, on them by, by finding out what you do. They try to find out what they do. They're, they're, they're yeah. all about information and, 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 and on their side. So, Hey, that's what we have to do on our side. I ha I've had some really good information where I've, I've had the color of the Gatorade last year. I didn't, it's funny. Uh, I know that red was delivered to the stadium. That's something mm -hmm. you have to know. But however, uh, the, you, you have to pick the winning side. You have to hope the winning side gets that color or whatever it may be. Two yeah. years ago, I, two years ago, I knew exactly what, what, what color was in each bucket. And uh, well, sure then enough, that's helpful, right? Because yes, you know, one of those you can bet both. One had them, clear, right? one had blue. So yeah, ah. so yeah, no one it, that that stuff. You can't really bet a lot of money. It's more of a novelty prop. But hey, yeah. you could bet. I think DraftKings was taking 250 this year on the on that. So wow. So yeah. okay. So as with everything, we need to talk about how the the pandemic is going to affect um, everything that's going on. So you know, are you using the same type of strategies when it comes to COVID? Because you know, we've talked about the fact that with NFL, it's a little bit different than some of the other um, sports because with NFL, they're making it so that if it, not only if the player gets COVID, but if anybody in their family, their immediate family has COVID, then they'll be pulled from the game. But with the player props, that doesn't make a difference because they do have to step on the field, right? Yes, as long as they, they take a snap and, 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 and uh, you know, the, the game goes and they're in the game, they don't even have to get a reception or they don't even have to get a handoff as long as they're in the game. 
but it might it might um, work in season long props, right? So if you're saying that DeAndre Hopkins is going to have MVP you know eight touchdowns this this season, yeah. then yeah. you know maybe you're 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 betting more unders this season because well they're going to have to have, there's going to be weeks. yeah there will be a stipulation I'm sure on those type of props that they'll have to play the full amount 16 games or whatever it may be. Um, okay. But, but I know like to, to win MVP and stuff, that's, that, that's some, some of the props I've seen. And, uh, you know, I definitely wouldn't be going with favorites there because you don't know what's going to happen throughout the season. I would look for maybe a little more of a flyer there with a, something at, you know, 20, 30, 50 to one or something like that. All right. So great stuff about the NFL props. I'm feeling pretty good about some of them going in this, this season. I think we're going to get the full season. So it's a, uh, it's a great time to learn a little bit more. Of course, you know, now that the player props are coming out, you want to download that crack wins app because he gives the player props for the NFL primetime games and all his picks of things that he's looking at. So make sure you download that app available on both Apple and Google Play and you'll get full access inside the world of the crack man and his weekly picks along with great betting strategies, tips and insider content. And of course, if you want to learn a little bit more about NFL prop bets, also check out our WSN.com. We have so many great NFL content articles all about predictions and odds. In fact, I just looked today and they have uh, some really cool stuff about Ohio State players and OU, Oklahoma University, Sooner players uh, that are in the NFL and which one of those player props you wanna get into as well. So make sure you check out WSN.com for our content on that. All right. Yeah, I, you're right, Rosalie, though. I, I don't know, I can't name another site that has as many articles that, that than we have here at, at, at WSN. So there are so many articles daily and, and uh, you know, you're going to get your fill there. It's, it's, and, and again, I always say this every week, it's the only place to go to find out all these different states and the bonuses mm -hmm. and, and what's going on in the sports betting world, the sports betting uh, world here in the States. I mean, you can click on any state and find out the bonuses, what's going on, what, what sports books are, are represented there. So, uh, keep, you know, keep on uh, joining us at WSN. Yeah, all the stuff that you always had to find out on your own, WSN has, has really uh, made it a lot easier for, for all those sports bettors out there. So, yeah. we, you know, we, we love having you come and enjoy the uh, website. So, you know, make sure you do check out all those things because even if NFL is not your thing, they've got every sport up there. So you'll find something that uh, works in your in your wheelhouse, although I don't understand how anybody wouldn't be into NFL. All right, speaking of NFL, we've got... A fantastic guest today. I say this every week, but I am kind of giddy in my seat here because this is somebody that comes from my world of fantasy football and daily fantasy sports. Evan Silva we have today. Evan Silva is very, very popular in the fantasy football world. Very, very world uh, world renowned. We could say world renowned. <laughs> He's worked at industry respected Roto World from 2019, uh, 2009 to 2015, and he helped to grow it into the leading fantasy football information site. Now, since then, Evan has emerged as one of the industry's foremost experts in all things football, and now. He combined forces with Adam Levitan, who I used to work with over at DraftKings. He is a DFS and sports betting expert, and they created their own site. It's called Establish the Run, and it is fantastic. They have more than two decades of combined experience creating content and forming connections to beat writers who are the key to that information, fantasy players and gamblers. So you want to check it out. Uh, check out establishtherun.com and right now check out the interview we did with him a little bit earlier. Hey Evan, thank you so much for coming on. I know I'm excited to have you because finally somebody from my neck of the woods, <laughs> right Bill? We always yeah. have your people on. This is your wheelhouse. Great That's to right. have you Evan. That's right. Talk F NFL, talk DFS. Absolutely. Talk no, thanks so much for having me on guys. Pre yeah, really appreciate it. love it. Love it. So, so Evan, first question, I've been getting this question a lot um, on some of the podcasts that I've been doing. 
and I'm sure that you are too, because now as, you know, with fears of a shortened season in the NFL or God forbid, no season, let's not even say that out loud, right? Because of COVID, it, do you think that DFS and best ball is going to get more attention as people move away from season long? Or you think that, do you think we'll get some more DFS players because of it? Well, I think that with, you know, so many other of the other sports firing and really, you know, showing the ability to overcome some obstacles uh, and with uh, and, uh, the, the numbers, the, the number of positive tests and um, have been really, really low in the NFL. I think that optimism is starting to grow that not only will there almost certainly be some semblance of a season, um, but that the NFL ultimately will be able to sort of power through. I think that the NFL um, is really intent on, on powering through obstacles. Um, you know, they've had more time than any of the other big sports to prepare for this. Um, again, you know, things have been going knock on wood smoothly so far. Teams are starting to have padded practices. You know, there's training camp reports coming out. There's no preseason games, which really have built a lot of interest, maybe even built more interest than, than I think that anybody realized, because, you know, when those, when those uh, preseason games start to happen, you know, a, a, a young running back will rip off a big run and, you know, people will get really excited about that. And you'll see his average draft position in fantasy football skyrocket. The hype um, train starts. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, we have not had that, but we have start to ha started to have um, training camp reports and beat writers that are on site watching the practices and reporting live from them. And that has really started to build. I, I think it's really started to occur over the last four or five days that the optimism and the positivity, because there, there was just a lot of negativity for a really, really long time, for months and months. But you, you again, you see the other sports, um, you know, being able to make it through. And, you, you know, the, and the NFL season is right around the corner. Um, so I, I have a, a good level of confidence right now that 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 positivity and that optimism is going to remain. We're going to you know go smoothly into week one. And then after that, I mean, you know, just like the NFL season itself, it's going to be, you know, we're going to go on a week by week basis and we're going to see how it goes, uh, because this is the biggest sport in terms of staff and coaching and and personnel, um, which, you know, theoretically, would, would, would put this sport a, a little bit at, at more at greater risk than, you know, an NBA team, which only has what 15 players on it. An, yeah. an NFL roster has 53 plus, um, you know, plus a practice squad and, mm -hmm. you know, a ton of coaches. Some teams have like 30 coaches. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think that, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, a lot better right now. And I think most people are than they were feeling even like a week ago. Well, and then we had that cornerback that was kind of made an example of mm -hmm. up in Seattle too, you know, maybe wouldn't have made the team anyway and uh, was caught trying to sneak a girl into the, the bubble team hotel and uh, got cut. So maybe, maybe that keeps people making the right decisions to give us a season. Go ahead, Bill. I know you have a question. No, cool. Uh, Evan, great. Great to see you again. And uh, great to meet you last year in Chicago. We got to uh, chop it up over uh, one of those deep dish Lou Malinati's pizzas, which I wish oh, I could awesome. have a couple of them now. So good. Oh, so man. Good. You I know, I'm going to go get some Lou Malinati's after this. Oh, You're making that's me rude. hungry, crack. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is, uh, that's like every time I go to Chicago, I, I, I'm a creature of habit. I found that butter crust pizza. That's where I stick to. But uh, uh, so, so let, me, uh, let me ask you when, when we filmed the Showtime docuseries Action, we had a big time fantasy player that was on the show, uh, known as Papa Gates in the fantasy world. And I know he's since moved on to Texas, you said. Um, anyway, he's won millions of dollars, and he's probably one of the best, or at least he looked like one of the best guys to me. But I noticed he used multiple entries. I think the day on, on action when we filmed, I think he actually lost a couple hundred thousand. But at the end of the year, he wound up winning, you know, uh, seven figures. So, um, But I noticed he used, like I said, multiple entries and combinations, of course, using his brain also. But my question to you is this, does the little guy, does, does he stand a chance against these kind of syndicate type of players and groups? Um, you know, does, does he stand a chance? Because when I see someone like that, I think almost myself in NFL or, or, or myself in sports betting, how 
you know, uh, unless you really follow a routine and really have, you have to be really good at this. So uh, only the top half a percent actually make money betting sports. What about the fantasy wise? What does, does the little guy stand a chance? The little guy does. I mean, obviously with far fewer entries, he, you know, he, his, his chances of winning, you know, a, a particular contest are reduced. However, you know, the, the people that play 150 entries, you know, in one tournament, they're also risking far, far more than someone who's maybe only putting three lineups into that particular tournament. Also on DraftKings and FanDuel, they have um, games where, uh, you know, people are not allowed to enter, have that many entries. You, there can be, you know, there are like uh, three entry games or, you know, single entry games, or maybe you can only en have 10 entries. And that's what I tend to play because I don't have time to mess around with a script and, you know, come up with 150 lineups, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make, you know, maybe three to 10 lineups, depending upon, um, you know, a particular weekend, how I'm, how I'm feeling, you know, how, how much free time I have, um, but how I'm feeling about that particular slate. And I like to enter those, you know, the, the five maxes or the 10 maxes or the three maxes or even the single entries. Um, and that, that really can, you know, that, that certainly levels the playing field. I think. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. great. I didn't know. I, I didn't mm -hmm. know the answer to that. Sorry, Rosalie. I didn't oh, realize okay. the, I didn't realize that there was single entries or only three or even 10. That's fantastic. That's exactly what I wanted to know. And it's what the, the even people knew the fantasy want to know. So that shows me there is a level playing field. I'm happy to hear that. Well, and there's different types of um, types of tournaments and there's cash games, there's tournaments, there's the M Millie makers are the ones where you can do 150. Uh, so, so Evan, maybe explain some of the differences between like cash games, tournaments, the, the you know, some of the, the, the different types of daily fantasy that people can play. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of, uh, you know, games where, you know, you're just trying to finish in the top half of like maybe a hundred, you know, there, there's maybe a hundred people allowed in. These are all single entries as well. Mm -hmm. Um, there's only a, a hundred people let in and you're just trying to finish in the top half or the top. 45 or something like that because you know DraftKings is, is going to take its rake but if you finish like in the top 45 then you double your money those are not nearly as fun as the <laughs> tournaments you know because you don't have a chance to win you know a couple thousand bucks or a million dollars or whatever mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people you know they, they so w when you're building a cash game lineup you, you want to think about your floor more uh, than necessarily your upside. You're not necessarily trying to finish in first. You're trying to finish within the top 45. So you're going to make safer plays. Uh, and then whereas when, when you're in a tournament, uh, you're, you're going to pick players that, you know, have like more spiked week potential. Um, you know, a guy who could go off for 150 yards and three touchdowns. You know, there's only, there's not that many guys that, that really can do that. Like Deshaun Jackson would be a great example. Deshaun yeah. Jackson, you know, doesn't have games where he catches like nine or 10 passes but he will have games where he has three catches for 150 yards and two touchdowns. You wouldn't want to play him in a cash game because he's not getting, you know, he doesn't have that floor. He's not getting a, a ton of volume and, you know, he's within his range of potential outcomes very much is two catches for 33 yards and no touchdowns. And that would really hurt you. You don't, you don't really want to play him in a cash game, uh, but he is always a, an excellent tournament play because he's got, you know, that ceiling, people generally don't like to play him because they, you know, they, they don't feel like they can trust him. And um, uh, I mean, he's, he's going to be a fun play this year. He's, he's, he's getting yeah. older now, uh, but he's healthy and, and he's, he's out there running with the ones in Eagles practice. And I think, um, you know, he's going to be a starter in week one. He's looking real speedy out there is what, yep. uh, what the word has been. But yeah, I, I talk to people about the dart throws. You, know, you need to know wh where those, those calculated dart throws are and how to find them. And so I, I love those. Those are my, my favorite types of plays to make are the ones that are the sneaky little plays. And that's in, in tournaments where you, you, you find the value. Um, so yeah, you know, a couple, another question that I've been getting a lot is with, again, with DFS as opposed to, to season long, because we are seeing more people play DFS, number one, because it's becoming legal in more states, and number two, because people are afraid to, to jump into season long games. And we're seeing 
sites like DraftKings do best ball as well, which best ball is something that's come along. And so best ball is season long, but they can shut it off at any time, right? Yes. I mean, you know, the, the different sites are, are, are going to have different rules, um, you know, and, and refund policies and, and all that. Um, you know, so before, if you're going to go like try to play heavy volume, like DraftKings just came out with a, a best ball, um, a best ball game, which it's excellent. I've, I've already got like six entries in there. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, and, and you, uh, it, it, they do have a contest, a big tournament where you can win a million dollars. Um, but you know, I think that before, you know, playing like, you know, 20 lineups or something or, you know, uh, doing 20 drafts, uh, 20 best ball drafts should probably read that refund policy. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, 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 and, and I, I actually need to go read it myself uh, now that we're talking about it. I, I just read it and there, there will okay. be, <laughs> there will be refund at certain levels. Like if it doesn't go past a certain time. So I did just read it because it is brand new to, um, to DraftKings in particular. I'm not sure about some of the other sites, but mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's great advice. Go re <laughs> read the refund policy. Right. Cool. Evan, I have another, I have another question for sure. you here. So uh, do DF players, do DFS players already have some of the skills necessary to succeed at sports betting itself? Are, are, are the players, are, like are, are the player props a good way for DFS players maybe to get into sports betting and playing the props? And when I say the props, the over under, you know, yards and mm -hmm. receptions. And so what, what advice do you have? What do you think? Um. So player props are not yet something that I personally have gotten into um, other than like futures and like, you know, doing MVP bets and, you know, comeback player of the year, that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I do know that for fantasy players, you know, or people that have played fantasy for a long time, betting uh, player props, you know, on a weekly basis should be almost intuitive. Um, it, it should be, it should really come easily to you. Uh, and I know that Adam Levitan, who, um, Rosalie has worked with, uh, in the past, uh, and, you know, worked for DraftKings and he did, uh, and we had our first year at, uh, of, uh, establish the run. We started our, our business, uh, this past year and he had a, t he did a, a player prop article every single week and he just mm -hmm. crushed it. I mean, something like, you know, 70% or, or, you know, 65 or something. I mean, he had a, a really, really good year. Like he would he would have weeks where he'd get like 13 out of 14 right or something. Um, wow. And that's just because it, it comes intuitively to him. And when you read his articles, you, it just, it makes all the sense in the world because I've been playing fantasy for forever too. And um, I just sort of need to find the time in my week to, to sit down and, and, and make those bets personally. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it, they, they go hand in hand playing really any form of fantasy season long redraft, best ball, DFS really goes hand in hand with uh, betting player props. No question. Yeah, the, the, sun, the Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night, the primetime NFL games, uh, these sites will have anywhere from, from two to 10 NFL player props. Some have more than that. So uh, very interesting. So how do we get that? How does the, someone like myself uh, get uh, the, 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 that list that, that, you know, what is it article he puts out every week? Do we subscribe to you or how, how do we get that? that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I want that email. How do we get that? the run.com. Um, so th thank you for teeing me up to, to plug this. <laughs> uh, our, our, that, that's our, that's uh, part of our in season package right now. What we're selling is um, the establish the run fantasy football draft kit, which mm -hmm. is just going to give you a ton of information um, leading into any kind of draft, whether it be, um, you know, just a, your regular home league that, that you play with your friends or office league or whatever, you know, on down to if you're doing like a dynasty startup where you're going to have to make 30 picks and you're not necessarily only thinking about 2020, but you're also thinking about two, three, four years down the road. Um, and that, that costs $34.99, but you get a free uh, $25 coupon to play any FFPC draft uh, of your choice. So really the, the call, the cost ultimately of the draft is only nine ninety nine. 
Yeah, I saw you you do it for everything. Now, somebody that that this is a lot of work that you put in there because you're doing a top 300 for DraftKings best ball, top 300 for full PPR, top 300 for half PPR, top 300 for non PPR, top 300 for two QB super flex. You you do a top 300 for for every type of fantasy situation you could possibly. That's a lot of work, my man. It is. It is. And we were, um, you know, fortunate to have, you know, a really good first year. And we, we were able to uh, hire like a, 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 st a statistical projection staff and they're the absolute best in the business. It's Drew Dinkmeyer and Michael Leone. And I set up the, the or just like our, our regular top 150 uh, rankings. And then Leone uh, like converts the, my top 150 into um, you know, a bunch of different formats, uh, just using his statistical projections. So yeah, we're able to have rankings for pretty much every fantasy format that you can think of. Incredible, incredible. So, you know, and I, another question that I've been getting a lot, and I would love to hear your perspective on this, because again, I do see more people trying to do some daily fantasy what are some of the key factors that are different in daily fantasy than from season long? What are some of the things, because you're looking at all these top 300s that you're doing and you know how to manipulate and change maybe who you take in the first round of a season long draft based on the format. What are some of the things that people who play season long, some key tips when they're going into fantasy, uh, daily fantasy that, uh, that they want to look out for? Well, first of all, it is, you know, you're essentially drafting your team, a new team every week. So if you had a bad week the previous week, you know, you're, you're not 0-1. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, you probably lost money, but, <laughs> but you're not 0-1. You know, that's not going to stick with you. You're a little um, negative in the bankroll, but. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly right. Um, you know, and you're drafting, typically when you play DFS, you're drafting with a salary cap. Mm -hmm. So you have to try to, you know, find value picks as, as you were sort of alluding to before guys that are cheap. Like I know on FanDuel, Jonathan Taylor, um, who probably is going to come out of the gate getting like 13 to 17 carries in week yep. one for yep. the Colts is only 5,400. And that's like just an amazing price uh, for, for a player that on FanDuel, which is not full PPR, Jonathan Taylor, probably not going to catch that many passes, but has a ch chance to score a lot of touchdowns. This year on FanDuel, touchdowns are really emphasized. Um, so you're looking for players like that who can allow you to get, uh, you know, more expensive uh, players under your salary cap, like Julio Jones or, you know, George Kittle or, or something like that. And typically um, looking for value, particularly at the quarterback position um, where, you know, it, it's a pretty replaceable position in terms of, just straight up fantasy point scoring. I think guys like Teddy Bridgewater against the Raiders in week one, Jimmy Garoppolo against Arizona, these guys are, are going to be cheap. And um, I think that they're going to be able to score like within the top 10, even though their salary is like 25th at the position or something like that. And be aware because Arizona always plays San Francisco really strong. So you always think, hey, Arizona, everybody picks on the Arizona defense, right? But that's the one team that Arizona always plays really strong. Well, especially George Kittle is going to have his way with this Cardinals uh, tight end defense. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody does. You're right, that's though. not news. Yeah, no, know. Everybody that's true. That's true. does. But yeah, he will, especially because the boy just got paid and he's, uh, he's going to mm -hmm. earn that money that week. But yeah, it, it's, uh, it, I agree with you. Those, those uh, value plays are key when you're coming in because everybody, you know, coming from season long, I think you naturally think I'm just going to take all my favorite guys, all these guys that score all these points, but you want to find the ones that are in those really, really sweet spots. Like when, like you said earlier, when Deshaun Jackson has those three touchdown games, like when MJJ Marvin Jones Jr. comes out and has those three touchdown games and has those sweet matchups, that's where you, uh, you find that value. So I agree with you. Fantastic. Love it. All right, Evan, one more question here for me. Uh, so you and I chopped it up about NFL totals last year, and mm -hmm. you did incredibly well. Uh, how does your fantasy knowledge help you with analyzing the lines, especially these, these totals? So, like, you didn't have a lot of them, but I think you went 3-1 and one last year. The year before that, you did good. But, uh, you know, uh, like, 
do you look at that? Do you look at that the, every week? Do you look at the totals in the NFL? Do you look at the, I know, I know you really don't bet. So, but I mean, uh, I just didn't know you came up with some really good ones last year and they were, they were like easy. One was a winner by halftime. So I mm-hmm. uh, just wanted to know your, your, uh, your take on well, that. Well, certainly, you know, being, you know, having the privilege to talk to guys like you and, you know, uh, also certainly Warren Sharp, um, you know, sort of prepared me, uh, to look at, at, you know, look at, you know, ha- have decent takes on totals. Um, but w- what I do each week is I break down every single game with like big paragraphs on, 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 e- on each game. And sometimes I'll just feel like, yo, this game is like, you know, this game could shoot out, you know. Yeah. Um, oftentimes it'll be two teams that tend to play faster and play with more pace mm-hmm. uh, when, you know, when they're facing off against each other. Um, you know, certain players uh, tend to produce better in certain spots. Like Amari Cooper has this kind of these kind of crazy trends where he produces way better at home and he also produces way better against man than zone coverage. So when the Cowboys are facing, you know, a defense that plays a lot of man and they're at home, you know, uh, and this all this extends to Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper's quarterback. Um, then, you know, that, that's, I, that's a very often a recipe for success for the Dallas offense. And, and they played fast last year and, you know, they were an, an over team. Um, and then, you know, they, and very often when one team is in a really good position to score a lot of points like Dallas in those certain situations, then that will sort of activate uh, their, their opponent mm-hmm. because, Hey, the Cowboys are, you know, they've got 27 by the third quarter. The other team has to turn up the tempo and match them, you know, and that's really how you can have the, you know, the, the back and forth situations, which are so profitable in fantasy and, you know, can potentially lead to the, to the overs uh, in, in, in the total market. Yeah. Excellent. And you see it, you see it at the, the unders too, when you see the opposite, yep. right? You see teams like Miami that have a slow pace of play. Well, maybe not this year, but, or Buffalo that has a really slow pace of play. Denver has a really slow pace of play. You know, that those guys are going yep. to score. They less tend to points. be coached by like defensive minded coaches. Yep. You know, they, they tend to be good on defense. They tend to have better running games. Yeah. Um, th- those teams are, are, are good. I think to- uh, like under, under teams, you know? Yeah. I think you too, you, um, it, it goes in reverse too, right? As a fantasy player, when you see those over under totals and you know it's going to be a high scoring game, it's going to be a shootout. Those are the players you want to start, including in DFS. When you see the over under at 56, 57, you're, those sure. are the games you're looking for, not the, not the Denver versus Buffalo games, right? So, exactly, right. Exactly. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Everybody out there, make sure you go to establishtherun.com and get all the great information from our good friend here, Evan Silva and Adam Levitan. They've got all the information you need on there for DFS, best ball and sports betting tips that will help you win that cash money. Well, that was so much fun for me. I know, you know, thank you, Crack, for bringing Evan Silva on. I know you had some uh, experience with him and that was just, that was, that was so fun. I loved it. Yes. No, he's a good guy. Uh, when I met him uh, in Chicago there, I didn't expect from, he's like a giant compared to me. He's like maybe another six, five or something. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. He, he's just a, a fountain of knowledge. Oh my God. Yeah. Great to sit down with him, chop it up. Great to have him on the show today. Yeah, really, really great. All right, so let's get into what I know all of you out there have been waiting for, which is Crack's picks and plays and the week to come. So Crack, you've got an NFL-inspired pick for me. I'm ready to listen. What you got? Cool. Well, you know, uh, I really don't do a lot of NFL sides, but I do have an NFL side for you. But first, let me just tell you, I I am just so uh, overwhelmed by I couldn't have asked for a return to sports better than we have at crack wins uh since baseball returned we're we're all overall we're 51 and 28 on everything however baseball we're 29 and 12 which is just ridiculous and because especially that we we play mostly underdogs we really don't play a lot of favorites so uh i'm just so stoked at, at what's going on and uh you know i'm not one that talks about just what we've done lately or what run you're on uh 
most of these tout handicappers talk about that. Just what they've done lately. I want to know what you've done for your whole career. Well, yeah. uh, you know, just in the, the past year since last football season, we're up 150 units uh, overall. That's just, and that's not even counting this, 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 uh, you know, this, this coming back record here. So uh, we're up like a ridiculous amount of units and uh, making people a lot of money. I'm so happy. Nothing makes me happier to make them money more than myself even because uh, there's one thing I hate. I, I, I hate losing. I hate when they lose more than even when I lose because yeah. I, I know my bankroll can withstand losses and I know what I'm going to do at the end of the year. I'm going to win every year, which I've done for 25 plus years, but I just don't want anyone to go overboard, but I know human nature and human tendency when you start to lose, but I've received so many emails from my clients telling me they've never been part of anything like this before. So I'm really happy that, that we're doing that, but let's go to our free pick this week and it's going to be week one in the NFL. You know, again, it's tough to give out picks because we have nothing. By the time we film and get to go to air, it's a couple of days later. We have nothing really to, to give out. So uh, I'm going to give out uh, this weekend. I'm uh, sorry. Th th for this week's pick, I'm going to give the Green Bay Packers. It's plus three and a half in about five different sports books here in town over Minnesota week one. Old division rivalry there. Um, I think that Rodgers is going to step it up here. They, you know, I think he was probably even sh shocked by their number one pick there being uh, Jordan Love. Um, do I have his name right, Rosalie? Jordan Love, correct. Being funny, actually. But, <laughs> but anyway, I think he was even shocked by that, though. Uh, so He was. Oh, he was. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think he'll look to step it up even more, maybe come out uh, with, with, with a, a real good start here. Uh, I know Minnesota's probably the better team, but I look for, uh, you know, again, small play here, nothing big. I don't really bet a lot on sides now. I'll bet, you know, 10, 20 times more than that on a total or a college game or, or even a baseball game. So, but it's something to throw in, uh, you know, your, your, your bunch of pit plays there for week one. I already give out under week one, the first game under the chief game. Now we got a, a side here to root for Green Bay. I like it. You know what? Because when I, I'm a big, when it, com, when it comes to NFL sides, I look at trends quite a bit. And if you look at Green Bay Packers, when they're favored by three and a half, they are two and O. Oh. And when they are uh, against the spread, they're 10 and six. And if you look at them versus Minnesota over the past four games, they have beat them three out of the four times and, and, and beat this spread. So I like that cool. a lot. So cool. great pick crack. Love it. All right. And anything else that you have your eye on? No, I'll let you know if it's a great pick uh, in, in about three weeks. All right, so make sure uh, it crack wins app. You'll have that stuff. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, well, we're getting ready for uh, for the season also. But again, the baseball has been just on a tear, and golf has been on a tear too. So uh, wow. we just got back to even actually plus a unit in the NBA. But uh, the baseball and, and and golf is where we have killed it. So and yeah, that's been the totals, right? The totals for baseball. Well, yeah, we've actually last couple of days has been totals, but. We have done really good with a lot of the uh, baseball sides, baseball. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Good yeah. to good. Good to know. All right. Well, let's get to our last segment of the day, which we all know and love. It's the Twitter questions. Uh, so it's time to answer those Twitter questions from our viewers. So make sure you guys tweet us your questions for next week and get those keyed up at WSN Sports, at Rosalie Michaels, or at Bill Crackman. And we will do our best to answer them next week. So here goes our two. We have time for two today. So uh, first one. At Brett Pat says, if you had to do it all over again, would you A, stay hidden or unknown to the books, or B, hit them as often as you can, even if they ban you, on to the next one, right, Crack? Well, that's, that's interesting. That's an old, uh, uh, I want to tell you who said that in the past, Billy Walters, one of the world-renowned world sports bettors. Go in there and absolutely kill them with everything you got, man. And then, uh, you know, because you're going to get thrown out anyway. So that, that was uh, my little BW impersonation. So, uh, but however, when it comes to casinos, I'm going to go, I'm going to draw, uh, go over here and, and, and talk about casinos for a second here. If it comes to casinos, I probably wouldn't have played blackjack and got myself in the Griffin book, which is the Griffin investigations book here. It's just for sharp gamblers. It's not like the black book out here. But I probably wouldn't play as much blackjack and, and get myself banned and get myself because now a lot of the casinos just think automatically he must be sharp. 
because mm. as soon as they see me or, or you know, they, they take a, a scan of your eyes, most of these places, some of them have unbelievable facial, wretched, facial recognition software. So, really? uh, oh yeah. So I'll just go to the sports book and then we're like, oh, cracks in the sports book. I mean, that's a true story. <laughs> so, um, I, I probably would do that differently as far as the sports books themselves. Well, you know, a lot of the sports books, they kind of, uh, they're going to know right away, whether it's Bill Krakenberger playing or it's just a anonymous Joe Smith playing it, but by the way, the lines, by the way, I play the bet, make the bets. And then by the time the closing line happens and I'm, I, I get the best of it by a point, two points, three points, or even more. So they're going to know right away, no matter what name I use, but I'm, I, I do use my own name, um, you know, in, in the sports books. And sometimes it helps me too. I get, you know, some recognition of, Oh, it's crack. Let's, let's get his plays and, and, and we can move off them or over move off them as soon as they come in. Yeah. That's, that's big time when you're making uh, them change their lines because you're in their bet in a certain way. Oh, yeah. Love that. Love that. Everybody aspires to, to, to live that crack level. All right. Um, next question from Brad Gold. A friend of mine got this crazy email from a sports book in New Jersey. They noticed he primarily bets promotions and odds boosts, and they are not happy about it. What's up with that crack? Well, uh, I'll tell you. The Euro companies, which are very good at offering bonuses and these boosts, uh, they, they listen. They're going to give you a bonus just to join. That's the way they all are. They, yeah. you, you get something to sign up, which you don't get out here in Nevada. So it, that, that alone is a really big thing. Uh, now they have the booster bets every day. They offer something at, at more than it should be, whether it just be someone to get a home run at plus four to one or five to one or with normal odds would be like, you know, maybe three to one or whatever it may be. They're going to give you something, but it's a max bet of 25 or 50 bucks but they're actually giving you something, not all the time now, the boosts aren't always a positive equity thing. Mm. So uh, you have to look, however, these guys know what shouldn't be and what should be. I mentioned before, I bet Tiger Woods just to make the cut at even money at a couple of times. And uh, that, that is like really should be like minus two and a half to one or something around there. So yeah. they're basically giving you 50 bucks, but you don't want to bet just all of them. They, they're, they're giving you these bonuses because they expect you to play some volume. So, you have to make sure that you're betting on other things too, or else you know they can pull it from you. They get to spend literally. Uh, I, I have had one of my places over there uh, cut my boost down in half, so they, they've taken me down from fifty bucks to twenty-five bucks. So, uh, but I, I really, honestly, I don't know why I've given them tens of thousands in action, yeah. but but they have taken me down too. So you want to make sure maybe you do a, a five to one or ten to one ratio of regular bets uh, to the boost or else they're probably going to limit you or even uh, ban you from those boosts. So unfortunately, really? so that's like, that's like if you only go to a certain store because you have a coupon, or if right. you only go to a certain restaurant because you have 50% off and right. that restaurant or store saying, Hey, we're not happy that you're only visiting us when you have a coupon. Well, yeah. I mean, most of those 50% offs are when you buy a coupon book or go on with one of those coupons, they're only going to let you do it once or maybe twice. They're not going to let you do it unlimited. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean yeah. some do with certain coupon formats, I understand, but for the most part, uh, you know, are you going to be that guy that goes into the restaurant with it? Let me just tell you something, Bill Krakenberger. I'm pretty dumb. I admitted about this. I don't use coupons anywhere. I go in and just pay. <laughs> I, I, I don't do it. It's funny. I'll go out with my prop guy once in a while and, and he'll sometimes bring a coupon out. Now, does he pay? Absolutely not. But he brings the coupon out. Mm. Um, you know, so, so you know, I understand the reason why you should do that. I just don't do it now. Well, what's going to happen each time whether you walk in and say, oh, this guy with the coupon. And then yeah. what you do, then what you do is you, the people actually tip on the final price. Yeah, that's a little different. Price. Yeah, I mean, yeah, who, that's Who wants different. that? Who wants that? I, I, I don't even, to be honest with you, I don't even want to be around those people that yeah. that are uh, tipping on the, the, the half, buy one, get one free dinners, and they're only yeah. tipping on half the price. Yeah, no, not, that, not should, that's life. a good point. That's a good extra crack tip right there. Uh, I'm just uh, saying, you because... know, this is the way I live my life. You know, these people are out there working, coming back from COVID and stuff, and you want to bring your coupon in and, uh, you know, uh, tip 15%. On, yep. on a on a forty dollar meal when it should have been eighty. Give me a break. Hey, you know what? I am all for saving a little money, but you're right. Tip on the original amount if it's happy hour. Tip on the original amount. Make sure that you take care of your service people out there because Absolutely. they work hard. So I'm all thank for them. You. My life is based on tips yeah. and people that tip and 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 you know uh, this is my public out there. You know, make sure you take yep. care of your waiters, bellboys, bus bussers, and everybody.
And there's an extra crack tip of the week for you. <laughs> you see what I did there? Crack tip yep. of the week. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right. I think you guys have had about enough of my bad jokes. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining us again this week. This is week 11. We've got more great content coming for you guys. So make sure you subscribe to WSN at, on YouTube and so that you can get alerted every time we have a new episode up. You do not want to miss my bad jokes and cracks really, really good tips. And so next week, we'll have another betting strategy deep dive, another special guest, and more picks and plays from the crack man. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.